Hello to YouTube. Today I want to talk about <coughs> some of the interesting um, facts about a very humble animal we have on this planet. I, I like to uh, pursue information about unusual qualities of animals uh, that uh, we have observed mankind, humankind, uh, through the centuries. And today we'll talk about gastropods. And we'll start in China. We'll start in China because according to a very old Chinese legend, two giant red snails once lived on the hill behind the temple. The snails emitted strange lights at night and because of that were worshipped by local villagers. Later the mountain was renamed Red Snail Hill and the temple, Red Snail Temple, Hong Luo Si. Originally the temple was called Great Brightness Temple when it was built in uh, 348 CE or AD. Today a scientific spot, the Red Snail Temple is located so that you know if you go to China in the Huairou County, it's northeast of Beijing. So the question is what paranormal properties did the gigantic snails possess? Because other snails seem to have very interesting properties and we'll go into them. Well you see snails have been observed to possess unusual properties in the lands located far away from China to the recorded history. Snails have been on this planet longer than the primates. They appear in the fossil records around 500 million years ago. There are around 80,000 species of snails that have been identified today. Most can be found in the marine environment. They are a part of Mollusca phylum, part of the gastropoda class, stomach food because they crawl on their stomach. A huge group of animals that has adapted to most habitats on this planet. Gastropoda are distinguished by, the, by their having a single shell. Their bodies are made up of a mass of material that holds the organs, a foot that holds the muscle, enabling them to attach to a surface and the head. Some, but not all, have eyes and tentacles. Slugs, like all mollusks, do not have brains in the traditional sense. Instead, slugs, slugs nerve cells are concentrated in tight knots called ganglia in important parts of the body. The common garden snail is not like the insect or an other anthropods. It's more, more closely related to squids, octopuses, limpets, and bivalves. And we know about octopuses and um, let's say mysteries that surround that very, very advanced animal. And I'll get into Soviet discoveries about octopuses in some other uh, video on my YouTube channel. But let's talk about snails and ask ourselves the question, did snails build pyramids? When the Spanish conquistadores invaded areas of Central America and Mexico in the 16th century, they discovered the ruins of a great civilization, that of the Maya, who had vanished and left evidence of their lost grandeur in massive structures in the surrounding rainforest. I did some research, by the way, in um, Yucatan uh, in early 1990s and then in 2008, and I'll get into some of the things that I, I've discovered knowledge about. But let's look at the snails. Um, from 300 to 900, Maya civilization had highly accurate calendars, mathematics, hieroglyph writing, and a complex social and political order and mysterious building techniques. Deep within the jungles of Mexico and Guatemala and extending into the Yucatan Peninsula remain fabled temples and palaces of the Maya. An article published in Russian magazine Nivirayat Mir in 2004 discussed ancient snails of Central and South America. Its author, Vladimir Kulakov, mentioned an archaeological discovery in a Maya burial chamber of an important priest. Among other artifacts discovered were very dirty leather bags, 
BAGS. No one paid close attention to the bags, most likely assuming that the continents must that the contents must have spoiled ages ago. The archaeologists were more interested in finding tangible treasures, decorations, art objects of the Venice civilization. The bags were considered to be, well, ritualistic objects containing food or drink for the departed. The contents were actually of liquid nature, sticky and had a very unusual smell. Some of the so someone had tore into one of the bags and having determined that its contents were of no value dropped the bag on the stone floor. The slimy contents oozed out and spilled all over the chamber's floor. No one paid attention to it until they came back in the morning and discovered that the stone floor covered by the slime became soft. One could model it like clay, make shapes from it. Kulakov believes that the bags contain the most valuable item that the priests wanted to take with them to the art of afterlife, turning rocks into soft dough. The priest possessed an uncanny ability, perhaps the ability to build the very complex Maya structure that still amazes researchers today. Perhaps the lost secret of the vanished civilization can explain how the gigantic edifices of the lost civilization had been built. For instance, the Baalbek Acropolis in the Middle East. And I have read other accounts and ideas about the same. I just wanted to bring forward Kulakov's ideas. Now, this discovery would change our views on the technologies used by ancient builders. Perhaps they had special vessels where the mysterious slime was kept and, it dep and deposited rocks and stones into it, into that vessel. When the contents became soft, the builders carried it to the construction sites where it was used for the construction of the foundation and the walls. That would enable the ancient Maya to build gigantic structures in the first millennium of the common era. Our mother concrete is compound material made from sand, gravel and cement. The cement is a mixture of various minerals, which when mixed with water, hydrate and rapidly become hard binding in the sand and gravel into a solid mass. But the slime found in the Maya burial chamber was a different compound and if used to build the ancient wonderful structures that stand erect thousands of years later, unlike modern buildings. One can see a clear difference. Kulakov believes that the explanation of the nature of the slime, unfortunately long lost, can be found in studying snails in aquariums. The Maya, without advantage of metal tools, beasts of burden, or even the wheel, were able to construct vast cities with an astonishing degree of architectural perfection and variety. Perhaps they used other, albeit unusual, means unknown to us. Let's look at snails. They consume debris and algae in the aquarium. Among the items consumed is calcium. Somehow the snails are able to devour the debris and build their shells. Perhaps the ancient architects had used the snails in their technology to create the long forgotten slime that softens stones, rocks. Perhaps there existed another species of snails, now extinct. I'll tell you more about the very interesting findings now of snails. So. There are many species of snails in the marine environment of Mesoamerica, surrounded by the Pacific, the Mexican Gulf, and the Caribbean. Perhaps the builders of the ancient world were able to discover the secret of the gastropods and had adopted and applied it in the technology, allowing them to build the Maya pyramids in large-scale structures built more than 1,000 years ago, and other still mysterious ancient structures. Hence. It would be nature that guided ancient architects. Kulakov presents an interesting hypothesis. Let us look at the, some modern gastropods. Trumpet snails rarely eat plants. They forage around in the substrata, substrate and cling to the glass of the tank, eating the debris, thus cleaning the aquarium. 
seared snails, also glass cleaners, devour algae and diatoms. And then there is the Mexican merite, which eats the algae and diatoms both from the rocks and the glass, and does not leave an algae film on the glass. The shell and the tissue which makes it the mantle are distincting features of the animals in the fallow mollusca. The snail's shell is usually coiled and is a part of the snail's living body. The soft-bodied section of the snail can be withdrawn into the shell, forming a defense against predators. The shell of the snails is largely calcium carbonate. They also contain small amounts of protein, but in reality its composition is more complicated and may depend on several factors. Generally, it is a complex structure, consisting of many different layers. What is quite interesting, snails that belong to different species and inhabit the same area still have different contents of binds calcium in their shells. According to Science Daily from um, 2007, um, uh, German scientists have uh, discovered that the shells of some land snails carry an additional camouflage layer consisting of soil, mountains of bizarre protuberances. Um, Napaeus barkini, a snail from the Canaries, produces its impressive camouflage layer by itself in the process of an unexpectedly complex behavioral pattern. It glazes lichen material from the substrata and applies it to the surface of its shell with its mouth. Uh, mouth. The snail extends its body far beyond its shell margin and deposits the lichen material on the farthest areas of the shell. When snails find food, they use the great like tongue located under the tentacles to shred it, as a saw would, you know. Some snails can grow their shell very fast. When a snail grows, the shell also must be enlarged to fit the snail's body. A snail extends its shell by adding new parts at the shell opening. The shell material is secreted by specialized cells of the mantle. First, a transparent and thin organic outer cell is created, outer layer, and then the calcified inner layers are deposited. How did the Maya and the other ancient builders build their temples and pyramids and what were their primary reasons for using such construction techniques? It is feasible that the ancient sages had a different way to build their structures by using the nature. In this case, the snail's process of creating the building materials of its shells, of making hard rocks into substance that would be transported and used by ancients for building complex structures. We already know of the Indian Ocean snail that uses uh, iron sulfides for structural pu purpose. And if we don't, I'll give you this information. That's enough for this uh, par part of my investigation of the snails. And I will continue because there are more mysteries uh, which pertain to this very unusual inhabitant of our planet. Thank you and please support my research. Um, you'll find the link in the description section. And let's go on to other mysteries.